everyone. Thank you, Lady Bird and Sonia, for, for chatting with us today. I'm so excited to just, yeah, get to introduce you to kind of the Fat in the Moon plant posse. Um, so I just wanted to, this is kind of our first official Fat Crush interview, um, and I just wanted to get a little bit more info about your connection to metal and also just why it why you wanted to bring it into being. So, so Sonia is the co-founder of Metal uh, along with BJ and Lady Bird, you're a counselor. You're part of the team of counselors um, and uh, kind of, yeah, just um, when I went to the Metal event, it just seemed like there was a lot of co-creation with all the minds that are part of Metal. So I'm just curious to hear a little bit more um, about, your, about your work with Metal and why you, especially Sonia, decided to bring it into being. Yeah, sure. I can start with that. Um, thank you for having us, by the way. It's lovely to chat with you. Um, so uh, Metal was created um, just pretty much out of a love of palliative care and the idea that everyone should have access to this type of care. Um, right now, palliative care, when delivered in traditional healthcare systems, is usually behind a referral wall, or maybe you have to have a certain type of illness, or maybe they're full and you can't get in. So we decided, screw all that red tape, screw all that bureaucratic nonsense, everyone should be able to talk about what they're going through as relates to dealing with a serious illness or a terminal illness or a disability or a chronic illness. So we decided to do away with the medical piece of it and just say, we're here to have these conversations with you um, to help you navigate this period because traditional, you know, healthcare system is going to be able to work, you know, surgery, treatments, radiation, all those things that are really great and important, but they don't really have the time to have these bigger conversations about how this illness is affecting your sense of self, how it's affecting your relationships, um, what is stressing you out, what is um, causing types of suffering in your life. So we really just wanted to say this should be accessible to everybody. Um, we've been trying to get the word out about palliative care and how great it is for a really long time. And this is really the first time that this felt like the best way to do it is to provide it in some capacity. Um, and without the medical piece of it, um, I kind of call it a philosophy of care. And I say that because I've also learned so much from watching Lady Bird and BJ and our other counselors um, do the work that they do. So I've used it in my own life to help me understand what other people are going through, how I navigate my relationships, how I communicate with people, when to let things go, when to understand what's my own thing versus someone else's. So there's a lot there that's also just about being human, which mm -hmm. feels right too, um, because that also feels like that's the thing that's missing when people are really sick and need help and guidance. Yeah, that's, yeah. that is so true. And I feel like that, um, that piece of, uh, of the aesthetic too, that it's really about the humanity, um, and, and also the way in which we, we kind of learn about each other through crisis or through suffering, but then also the kind of other disciplines that we gain access to. So, you know, and during the event, there was an artist, there was an architect kind of talking about, you know, the structure that we have, um, that you know, we kind of take for granted with a medical system that is actually really restrictive. So like how we can get really creative when we kind of, when that, when that restriction of the medical model is kind of taken out of the equation, like there's so much creativity that's there, which I thought was just really beautiful. So thank you for, thank you for sharing that. And then Lady Bird, I'm curious to hear um, from you as well. Yeah, well, I'm, Sonia, that was a beautiful. <laughs> I really love listening to that. Um, it's great to, hear you articulate just how this happened and how it's impacting you. And so I came to metal, Sonia and BJ invited me to join them after they got it started. And it was right in 2020. Um, is that correct, Sonia? I feel like that was around the con when the conversation what is, what was is happening. What is time anymore? You know? I, I don't know. Like what? But it was just like, hey, do you want to, we would love to have you come join us. And I was like, great. Yes, I'll do it. And, you know, uh, Rachel, you had mentioned before we started the call this this feeling that the work that we're doing is for the people, you know, by the people. And it actually, I, it's so true. It really does have this sort of revolutionary quality to it, which is palliative care to me is not, it's not exclusive. It's not rocket science. It's not complex. It's actually just logical human care. 
And, mm. you know, there's a way that I feel like this model is almost bringing it out of these structures that it's been put in. And so that we can actually just realize like everybody wants to feel good. Everybody wants to live a full life um, regardless of your situation. And so this model really is, there's a freedom in it that allows the clinicians and the people that call in to really express who they are, where they are in the moment and figure out where they want to go with that versus what's your diagnosis? What's the, what are the medications that you need to use? How are we going to get this in the payer system? And all of that is absolutely so cumbersome mm -hmm. um, that everybody just gets lost and our lives get lost in it. So yeah, I came on board because I believe in it. I believe in what BJ and Sonia have, have created and what their, what their intentions are around this model. And it's a lot of fun. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's incredibly fun. And I love teaching and sharing all of it so yeah that's why I'm here I hope that it can actually take off and really inspire a new movement yeah thank you yeah and I think it it really um is um what I think is so interesting and beautiful about metal is um that it seems like it's really the inspiration of people in the field and you know there's something that starts to happen when um you know within a discipline or within a field people are kind of getting excited about a new a new form or you know feeling like there's a need for a new form and how that you know is this sort of microcosm and then that those ideas and um start to actually come out into the collective and i feel like what metal is doing is opening a conversation that's relevant to all of us mm -hmm. not just people who are you know needing palliative care or or at, at end of life or whatever it is but actually that it is this is a this is a human issue and, you know, what I heard over and over again, too, is by actually um, during the metal event, by actually kind of leaning in um, and, and learning about um, basically death and dying and suffering, that there's so much wisdom, there's so much uh, information that we get during those times, um, which we are all going to go through that actually really bring meaning and, and purpose to our lives. And the more we kind of keep that separate, the more that as a collective, we, we, we suffer. So um it's just such a beautiful thing that you all are doing and it's sort of this hybrid so I'm curious too just to hear maybe a little bit about like yeah like where do you see um or where do you want to see metal kind of going or um what's like best case scenario for you in like 10 years or 20 years that's an interesting oh, question I'm such a bad like <laughs> Your planner. Planner. But, so we have a CEO to think of those things. Um, but I can, I can definitely talk about that. So, you know, when we first started, it was very much, okay, we're just going to provide this, this type of care to people one-on-one -on -one, and that's all we're going to do. And we're continuing to do that. And it's amazing and wonderful. And I don't think that will ever go away because it keeps us connected to what people are experiencing and what is happening um, for illness and with the healthcare system. So that's really important for us to keep that going. But I think the thing that's come out of this that's really exciting for me is um, BJ and Lady Bird working on what we're currently calling the metal method, which is kind of this approach to care. So it's taking what we do at metal and how we think about care and putting it on paper and into kind of lectures and videos and activities to say this is how you can start to you know begin to think differently about how you are working as a clinician and hopefully this will then be expanded to caregivers and patients as well because this as we said is a human issue so a lot of the stuff ladybird you can absolutely i would love to just hear like the topics on the curriculum they're very human. It's not, you know, how to take care of someone with advanced cancer. It's what is your relationship to yourself and what is your relationship to suffering? And then how do you then approach someone else? So this is applicable to caregivers, to patients, to clinicians. So my hope is that, yes, we do this one-on-one -on -one counseling piece and absolutely continue to do that because people have such individual unique needs um, based on where they live and what their family life is and what their illness is and do need very specific individual guidance. But there are a lot of universal truths out there that are just a lot of people are going to go through this type of suffering related to communication or this type of existential um, dread related to the end of their life. So if we can address um, a lot of the universals in these types of trainings, we're able to then reach many, many more people. 
And the hope is also by reaching many clinicians, those clinicians will then start to change their practice and how they work with people and how they relate to them. And hopefully that effect will continue to ripple out as well. So I get very excited. Um, I love the one-on-one -on -one work, but that's a hard one to then bring to many, many people. So this is kind of an opportunity, I think, for us to say, this is a different way of being with people who are living with serious illness. And this is something that anyone can do. You do not need to be especially trained in this. It is, you can be the, a barista, you can be an administrator, <clears throat> you can be anybody. This is something that you can tap into as um, a person. Ladybird, I, I'm hoping you can just- No, I, I agree completely. I mean, I, I think when I think about the future, for me, it would be something that I can't imagine. Mm -hmm. I, I want I want to see this continue to evolve, that, that what gets um, nurtured is curiosity. Mm -hmm. And the difference that I felt like at this event, and Rachel, you can you know say what it was like for you, is that this wasn't about mastery, you know, so much of looking at death and contemplating death has been to make sure that when you die, you're ready to die, or that when somebody else dies, you've got it all together, and you know what you're going to do, and everything's in order, and that's, all of those things are really beautiful and lovely, I'm not, like, opposed to that, mm -hmm. but the focus has been on control, the focus has been on mastery, as though nothing is going to continue to change, and the way that we're talking about illness and death now is not the same as it was even 20 years ago and hopefully it's not the same 20 years from now but that that what we're creating now actually gets to continue to be a living way of being and is completely beyond my expectations or ideas because how could I possibly know that mm. um, but hopefully it's it's a it's living <laughs> and people feel inspired to continue being curious about what it actually means to be in the universe I mean it's just I mean I won't even go off on that because I do I do like to go off on that but it's fucking crazy <clears throat> we live on a planet I mean come on like let's just not even fool ourselves that the goal of that is to somehow become a master of dying or mm -hmm. figure out exactly what somebody needs with chronic illness you know the beginning of the event if you remember was this beautiful opening session with two clients and it wasn't about how do you master living with dementia right it was Here's what's happening right now mm. and that's really what we're hoping with this training is that we can bring ourselves back to the place of really noticing what's happening in the moment not because we're not caring about other things but there's a different kind of quality of that which really is focused on um, growing and evolving and changing actually mm. that it's not static mm. Just yeah. quick note, that's one of my favorite things I've learned from Lady Bird. There's many of them, but that idea of not trying to master something and it's applicable in so many areas, like I think that that's something that comes up. Okay, I'm going to start water skiing. I'm going to be the best water skier. Like it, there's nothing in this goal, but to be great at it. And there's something that like the permission to not have to do that or that it may go some completely different way. And that's okay too. Like that's an important reminder. I remember when I first started working in hospice, there was a lot of talk of a good death. And that was a phrase I used all the time with everybody. And not that that's a horrible phrase, but I kind of realize now, like it's not always possible. And to put it out there is the thing that it, we should all be trying to attain. What happens if you don't get it? Are you, have you failed at this? So that's something um, that, yeah. Lady Bird has lots of beautiful pearls of wisdom that I have <laughs> taken from over the years, but that's one of my favorites that, you know, I use in my everyday life. Like you don't have to, this is not about mastery. It's not about being the best at it. It's about what your personal experience is and being open to, it may be bad, it may be good, or it may be something completely different that you didn't think about, but being open to that change mm -hmm. and curiosity and mystery is a big part of getting through this. It's really beautiful. Yeah, I feel like that that control piece is a big part of that too. You know, having something good or you know mastering it is it. It's just a it's just another dimension of of taking control over something and that kind of more organic process of planting a seed and nurturing it and then it's going to grow and then you know once it creates seeds then they're going to go out into the world and they might find different kind of soils you know and grow in a completely different way. So I love that. Like that it's a living system. And then you can collaborate with the elements around instead of feeling like it has to be one way. Um, 
Yeah. And you can be very intentional. You know, again, it's not about randomness. You know, sometimes that also gets mixed in there where it's like, oh, I don't have to care and it doesn't matter what I do and anything can happen. It's like, yes. And Mm -hmm. you have, at least in my, for me, I feel like I have a response. The responsibility is on me to be responsible for the life that I'm engaged in. Right. Mm -hmm. That's really what I have to come home to every night is like, am I choosing to be responsible for my life? And what does that mean? And how does that show up in other places? So Mm -hmm. I get to really be thoughtful about how I support something moving forward. um, Not just throwing it out of the nest. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And that, that piece of care, you know, that it's coming from care and then how do we act when we're coming from a place of care? And that it's actually kind of a segue into um, a question that I have for both of you. So, um, you know, we are an herbal body care business. So self-care in all of its forms and all of the ways that the term is used, you know, is, is something that we're trying to always unpack. Um, what does that really mean? What does self-care really mean? Um, you know, it can, it can get kind of um, superficial and, and kind of meaningless. And actually one, uh, one thing that I heard at the metal event, which just blew my mind was um, from Karen Schenke, um, mm-hmm. She who's also a counselor, therapist and a sex therapist, I believe. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, and she she said this term that um, instead of self-care, self-stewardship, and mm-hmm. that just yeah. felt like so on point. So I'm just curious, too, because within medical models and just any caregiving models, oftentimes the caregiver gets pretty burnt out. Um, and so it's this sort of like extractive process. So I'm just curious to hear from the both of you kind of what's your relationship to self-stewardship um, mm-hmm. or self-care? Um, yeah, if you could just say a little bit more about that. I, I, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I also was really, I noticed it when she said that. And I, um, I agree a hundred percent that it's, it's such a different quality and the model of, you know, the martyr, the, the, the person, the client before you, the family member before you, anybody before you that you just are throwing yourself out there and out, you know, if you're not in an actual emergency, like the house is on fire you have to make a decision between yourself and another body. Most dynamics are not that emergency type of situation. And there is a quality about if we really can have a sense of self love, that our life actually matters as much as any other life, not more than not less than but it's it's equal. You bring that forward. That's the stewardship of that you are actually tending to yourself, you are actually seeing yourself and valuing yourself as a part of this story not that the patient is more important the client is more important than you that that storyline isn't quite balanced and it actually doesn't feel very balanced to the person on the receiving end either you usually can feel kind of smothered um, by somebody's putting you on this pedestal or putting you in a place that you are so deserving more than anything else in the world and it's again these qualities of of, um, of balance so to me, self stewardship is really it comes back to like that sense of balance and belonging, that you recognize that you belong in the world, and what does that actually feel like? And this is I say this because this is my personal work. It's not something that I do very easily. It's been something that I am certainly continuing to try to learn and understand in myself. Like yeah, the ways that I can believe that I matter actually do impact how people heal and how they receive care it's it isn't separate Mm. Um, so yeah self-care to me feels like self-responsibility thank you that that is really beautiful and yeah that self-responsibility piece that's I'm going to be chewing on that now (laughs) thank you (laughs) yeah what about you Sonia oh I love that ladybird um for me, you know, I, I agree on the concept of like what self, the concept of self-care has become like a bubble bath, you know, or going for a walk or whatever that may be. And for myself, it's very much um, setting boundaries is stewardship to me um, and understanding, I think this goes along with Lady Bird's thing, is what what gives you energy and what when you need to rest and restore to then come back and do it again so um i am very big on saying no to things i am big on setting time aside for just me to do nothing um there's a lot of stuff that wants to pull you into this event, this party, this something, going to this, you know, trip with your friends. There's lots of stuff 
that is happening. And there's also a feeling, I think, of needing to be productive, both in work and your personal life, that there you must be doing things to be enjoying and living your life, that you <clears throat> need to go to Tahoe every weekend and get the most out of your time off. Or, and bless the people who do that. But for me, that's not what gives me restorative energy. So I try to be very, um, I try to listen to what my brain and my body is telling me and say no to that. Mm -hmm. And I think those boundaries help me stay energized when I am in the space of helping other people. And then when I'm not, I get to go back to being just myself in, <clears throat> in a space where I can um, restore my energies. So there's that. And then also self-care for me is being kind to others. I get a real hit um, of goodness from being kind, being thankful. Um, that's, that's a big part of it too. So for me, it's just, how do I interact with the world? Is it with anxiety and fear and, um, you know, something not akin to love and understanding. And then this goes back to kind of the, the metal method philosophy is what might this other person be going through and how can I show up in a way that is not adding darkness to their day? So that's how I would want everyone to interact with me. And that feeds me to be able to come into the world um, with kindness and understanding. So those are the two things is definitely boundaries and just <clears throat> wanting to be a force of calm and soothingness and kindness for people. Um, Cause I think there's not a whole lot of it. So where I can, I want to be able to do that. Mm, well, as, as far as I can tell, you are a real force for kindness and, and <laughs> in my personal interactions with you. Thank you're doing. Uh, she is a force of that and of the boundaries too I have learned so much from Sonia about you know something will happen and I'll call and she's like just say no I'll say no for you I'm like oh my gosh that's amazing and she does it kindly you know mm. like that's so she, she incorporates both together it's really mm. it is really remarkable I think that's it's like an honesty too which is so beautiful and you know I feel like also with some maybe some of the lessons of you know hospice or you know your time there maybe this is this is off but like being able to really prioritize like what is the most important thing and not to say that you know somebody else's needs aren't important but it's also like what is the most important thing to me and how can just my actions reflect you know my priorities in my life and right that's um to do it in a kind way um it's just it's just good honesty yeah, yeah I, stepping out of that urgency. Oh, sorry, mm, Sonia, I was just say, but no. like that it's not just about you. Like even in that moment of like, what do I need? What does this person need? But knowing that there is a future, and that mm -hmm. there was a past, and that there's a whole community of people, and so really embodying and not embodying, but inspiring other the rest of the world around you to also step mm -hmm. in and mm -hmm. know that this is going to be tended to in other ways, not just in the moment that you're tending to it. Yeah. Good point. Oh, I was I was just going to share a story, Lady Bird. We have this um, this woman who uh, joins us on webinars. She's also a palliative care, I think, psychotherapist, Danny, Lady Bird, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she shared this story about a client that she had. Who the the whole interaction that she was having with this person was about going to a party on the weekend, and the woman was just like, I just. I don't really want to, but I feel like I have to like, and it was just talking through, why do you want to go? What, what is going to happen if you do go? What is going to happen if you don't go? How does this feel? And the woman ended up not going. I asked her, I asked Danny about it later. Like what, what did she end up doing? And she said, she ended up staying home and watching, you know, trash TV. And she said it was the best day ever. Like there's just, there's, you know, sometimes doing the thing that you want to do, like is really the best. And it feels like you're letting other people down, but you're not letting yourself down. So it's, you know, she had the greatest weekend by <laughs> setting her boundaries and saying, no, this is what I want to do. So I, it's applicable all over the place. It's one of my favorite things. <laughs> yeah. And that's like a real, it's real radical. It's a real radical act also um, kind of not, you know, do things for other people in a certain way, or to really be self attuned enough to to know what it is that we really want or we right. really need. Um, so yeah, I do feel like there's a, a self connection that we start to um, sort of foster uh, and nourish when we when we 
think about this when we think about you know what what do what do I really want and um and then again I think from there we can really bring our gifts because then our we know that our when our cup is is being drained or when it's getting filled up Mm -hmm. so I'm I know we have just a little bit uh a little bit of time left but I'm just curious if there's anything that um that you all just wanted to share with the fat in the moon kind of audience um anything anything left to say Hmm. Well, I mean, I could go just full shameless promo and <laughs> talk about what we do. So yes. I mean, the more, the more people know that we're here literally I, to help you, you, your parents, your neighbor. Um, there's so many stories that we hear where people say to us, I wish I had had this, or I wish I knew about this. There is a misconception about palliative care being just for the dying and it's so not true you could be years decades from dying and living with an illness that is causing some type of suffering or you're just not sure what to do or maybe you um you know are feeling things about it that you don't feel like you have a space to share with your family and friends because they might shut down those feelings so we want to be that space to help people navigate um going through these difficult moments this is not something you know, we were taught to do. So you're kind of doing it um, all by yourself and reinventing the wheel all over the place. So, um, so one, we're, we're here to have these conversations with anyone and everyone. That's really important to us that everybody have access to this. And then two, um, hopefully sometime very soon, we'll have um, a way for people to sign up for the metal method and just learn from Lady Bird and BJ directly about Mm -hmm this type of care and, you know, their thoughts on what it is to be a human taking care of yourself and taking care of another human. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. We will definitely be, you know, all of the evolutions uh, of metal, we will be sharing with, with our plant posse. So I'm so excited to see this work continue. Yeah. What about you, Lady Bird? I don't know if I have anything to follow that with. That was incredible. (laughs) Well, thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Yeah. Thank you both so much again. And I just have to say, I was just so blown away by uh, by the folks that are involved with metal and just the conversations um, that I heard at the metal event. I hope you do more events um, because that really gave the sort of full spectrum of of the possibility. And I think um, everyone who who went to the event, you know, when we left, we were all like, our minds were blown just thinking about the, the possibility and the conversations that we all really need to be having um, as as a collective um, and the way that um, metal really is catalyzing some of these these conversations was just so cool. So um, thank you for the work thank that you, you do and for and for chatting with me today. Oh my gosh, thank, thank you, you so much. And us. yeah, thanks for having us and thanks for coming. It's, it's really uh-huh. lovely to hear that, you know, it's really great to hear when the thing that you wanted to project to be felt and heard is what was received there's something really amazing about that when it is you know taken in the way it was intended so I'm so happy to hear that thank you yeah and I I feel like this is also going to be really inspiring for other herbalists I think herbal medicine and palliative care just naturally go together so I think this is um, I'm really excited about that kind of terrain also starting to open as well so um, yeah thank you so much again Thank thank you have a good okay. one. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.